She Almost Had Everything, written and read by Mick Miles from the upcoming collection of short fiction, Aloha Shorts. She Almost Had Everything. She almost had everything at this point in her life. She'd eaten a vampire share of mosquitoes and all the rich surprise blood that came with it. She'd snacked on flies at leisure whenever that particular craving hit. She'd made a legacy out of snatching and collecting crickets, and she'd generally eaten every sort of bug she'd ever come across, which was probably all of them, in Iao Valley. She'd almost seen everything, every sight there was to be seen. She'd always taken full advantage of her range of vision, mastered the ability to use each eye independently. She'd peered through waterfalls for so long she'd seen prawns while simultaneously mapping out, in slow motion, a flight plan her tongue would take in securing dinner from a cloud of gnats. She liked to look out into the valley and flash cobalt blue for the gushing fresh water streams, then switch to jade green for the lush needle she had an eye on up above. She'd seen so many of her children grow from droplets on treetop twigs into adults with and without horns, big enough to become her competition, yet she never once thought of naming one. She'd seen almost every type of human, and noticed they had such small numbers of children that every one of them had a name. She must have heard them all too, because too many times there were name repeats, the Ashley T's and Michael P's of the world. She'd heard of humans named Jackson, but she'd never come across a person called Chameleon. She'd almost been everywhere. She'd been in and out of banana trees. She'd turned herself dark brown for stretches at a time on the trunks of Christmas berry trees, She'd been royally red at the great heights of poinciana blooms, and when she didn't feel like being camouflaged at all, she had taken countless naps among sugarcane stalks, ferns, and kukui leaves. She had been down among the smooth rocks of the river, but she'd been clutched tightly to the swaying tips of bamboo shoots up at dizzying heights of the mountaintops as well. She'd had her fun as a spry young lizard, in the danger of human-owned towels and beach bags, but she always knew when to escape and avoid becoming a house pet. She'd almost heard everything, every language there was, every sound in the rainforest. Humans brought phones, cameras, coolers, backpacks, and other things that brought volumes of more noises, many of which could never be heard after nightfall. She imagined she'd speak English, pidgin, or Japanese if she were human. And if she could somehow master speech, she would speak whichever language was necessary for each conversation. She heard the flap made by eager wingtips of birds on hunt. She learned to detect twigs snapping, or the damp sounds of grass being stepped over on the forest floor. She'd made almost every decision there was to make to get her slow-moving legs in motion based on a good lifetime of listening to almost everything. She'd paid a particularly special attention to the songs the humans brought, and found herself dancing to many number of occasions of roots, rock, and reggae beats that rumbled from Bluetooth speakers and on through the core of her tree branches. It was true. She'd almost had everything. Almost. There, on the thinnest, most outstretched branch on the neighboring tree, was something so shiny, so brilliant, so purple, and so mysterious that she didn't know it at all. She'd never had it. She didn't know. Was it food? Was it flower? Was it rock? Was it dangerous? She didn't know what part of the thing she should color match. The thing was violet, but also white when the sun shone through. It had an area that looked like a yellow worm, but the yellow was something more perfect, more ultimate than yellow ultimately was. She'd never seen a color changer in any other life form than Chameleon, and she'd seen almost everything. What she did know is that quite possibly, if she could have this thing, she would have certainly had everything. Rambunctious baby humans were nearby, down by the stream, but she had seen them before, all right. She kept one eye on all of them, periodically scanning the phones and backpacks they would so territorially guard and one eye on the new thing, the thing she'd never had. The wind was retreating a bit, pulling subtly on the leaf bridge she was wrapped upon. She had seen this wind. It wasn't anything worrisome upon this bridge. She had taken this bridge hundreds of times. She'd taken almost every leaf bridge to almost all of the neighboring trees, despite the pull of whatever subtle breeze may have been. 
She kept her focus. Though her tongue still sprang like lightning, her legs ached at a slow crawl of just under a mile an hour. She endured the wind. It pulled and it pushed, but she dipped when she needed, and she moved when she needed. There was the shiny thing, ever closer just before her. She was almost there. She almost had it. She almost had everything. A rare thing happened then, just as she thought she had almost seen everything. With one eye, she spotted a slightly larger breed human approaching with a hand outstretched towards her. With the other eye, she saw rows of cherry blossom petals being ripped from the trees like waves towards the shoreline. The real big wind was coming, and so was the threat of the human hand. She did what she had done so many times before. She waited for the right time. She had seized millions of right times before. The right time came, and so did the human hand on the south side, and the great big wind from the east. Instead, her eyes were focused on the one thing, the one thing she had never had before. Chameleon, but not chameleon. Food, or maybe flower. Reward, or potential danger. She almost had everything. Then, her lagging, unsure hands missed the target leaf bridge. She had grabbed almost every leaf bridge before, caught herself from nearly every fall, but she couldn't do it this time. She'd lost her balance too completely. She had fallen almost all the different ways there were to fall, but never before in slow motion. This was the real big fall. She had felt every pain, every leg broken, chipped nearly every tooth, had her tail snipped and then regrown, and been bitten or clawed by almost everything. She had never felt the bite of the ground before, never known it as a predator. She'd escaped nearly every attack, defeated and eaten almost everything there was to be defeated and eaten. She'd never been beaten by the ground before. And the shiny thing. She almost had it. She almost had everything. She saw almost everything, but she didn't see this thing, not completely. Was it cobalt like fresh water gurgling over river stone? Or truer than the truest yellow? Did it change again? Did another Jackson get to it first and eat it? Oh no. Or was it just a flower after all? She didn't know. She never had it. Kumu! A young male human yelled, looking down at her. The Jackson went fall from the tree branch. She was trying to grab somebody's ring. What do we do? She keeps changing colors. Kumu, I think she's dying. She heard a girl child say. She heard almost every sentiment there was to hear. She'd never heard that one. Her bones hurt. Her everything hurt. Her eyeballs left orbit. She almost had everything. The end.